So you just saw that data were recorded on the computer locally, but at the same time, the same data were actually sent to a Sparkfun data server. So what you're looking at is a sample screen of a soil data logger that uh, this is a different sensor, it's a Decagon 5TM soil temperature and the moisture sensor. So while I was uh, uh, having a vacation for 30 days, I ran this for 30 days, but the plot, I only plotted a few days, so it doesn't really look overly cramped. So uh, this is the, the temperature plot. As you can see, you can actually pick out temperature data and what time and what temperature. And uh, the right side is the soil's uh, uh, dielectric constant. I didn't really bury the sensor in, in soil. Actually, it's just in air, so I can easily transfer it onto a different computer system for testing. So as you can see, 1.0, that was when the sensor was actually freely hanging in the air. And then I probably picked it up and, and placed it on the carpet. So that happened, that occurred for a few days, and then I probably picked it up by hand, touching the probes, or maybe it was my son, and then just quickly jumped down, back to roughly just carpet again. So uh, this is just a sample, it's collecting from a particular data logger, and uh, the data that uh, you're collecting with the sample uh, data logger program is not displayed here. Uh, you can certainly specify what data logger you want to display, what data, but let me show you all of the data from that sample code because everyone using that sample code will be sending data to the same exact place. So you can click this link here to inspect all test data. Okay, here we go. So um, we were actually logging data. We did five data points only for a sample. And here are the five data points. These are the timestamps uh, when the, uh, the server received our data. So as you can see, they're separated by about 12 seconds because we use 10 second delay and uh, probing the sensor, uh, sending, to, uh, sending data to the internet, that takes about two seconds. So uh, the unit ID is actually my computer's ID. This is a, an automatically generated ID from uh, the computer I'm using. Um, although you can set it to your own uh, desire if you want. For example, this is my other computer. It's a Dell 14R, so I put my name on it with the, the model number so I can easily recall what exact um, computer I'm using it on. And you can, if you scroll back, and there, these are the Raspberry Pi data logger that was running for 30 days trial. And uh, as you can see, this one here, the one, the data we just logged, are two values. I, I set the, uh, uh, the the server to record as many as six values. This is just a sample. Uh, your data logger may have several sensors. You may have 12 values to record, but these are all customizable. But for sample code, um, so we'll just do whatever uh, we could do with six data points up to six uh, numbers. So as you can see, two spectral reflectance values and also the orientation of the sensor. Um, and I didn't really send the, um, uh, the SDI-12 sensor's uh, address to it, although I could. So five data points, and then if you look at this other one I collected from a different computer, this is a different sensor, it produced four numbers. And then uh, these are other ones are the, uh, the Decagon 5TM soil sensors that I mentioned. And uh, these are 20.9 degrees C, that's basically uh, the indoor room temperature, and that is the dielectric constant 1.41. Basically, if you lay the, the probe on the carpet, it'll get you this range. And all of this is actually free of charge. Sparkfun has provided this service so that everyone can test uh, Internet of Things, and uh, this is a very good service because um, it provides enough storage, you can store about 50 megabytes of, of data, and that's a lot for, uh, for all these text files. And also, you can, you can uh, acquire the data back, just like what I did here, and send that query data to, uh, to this plot. This is actually a Google plot. It's also free of charge, uh, provided by Google. And uh, you can send a portion of the data, for example, what this one does is, it extracts all the data that have the um, um, 
my Raspberry Pi data logger's unit name so other data don't get mixed together. So this is only from one unit. Um, that's why I kind of stopped around here when I stopped the data acquisition a couple of weeks ago. So uh, it queries only that data, and you can also query only the most recent, uh, say, 200 uh, or 1,000 data points, so you don't have to wait forever for the plot to show up. This is probably a couple hundred data points. So uh, it's reasonable. It, it takes seconds to show up because the data have to be sent to Google, and Google has to render a plot and send it back to the, to the web page to be displayed. So there's a lot of uh, customization you can do. You can also do customization such as having a little drop-down menu to change which unit, which logger unit you want to log data and uh, you want to display it onto the, the plots. And also uh, what time range, for example, if you put a date picker, the time picker, you can uh, select the time range you want to download the data. So these are all customizable features that are, are stitched together with a um, a data logger using the SDI-12 USB adapter, Python code, and SparkFun's uh, PHANT FANT data server, and also Google's uh, free charts.